This week's episode was brought to you by Robert Cunningham and Kenneth Williams. If you too would like to support the show, make your way on over to www.patreon.com slash the whole rabbit, where five bucks will get you our extended episodes, stickers, and access to the whole rabbit discord server, where you will have an opportunity to interact with the minds behind the show and play games like Minecraft with us. Larger donations still will earn you lessons and readings in tarot by yours truly. Thank you and enjoy the show. It's so confusing. All the digital ins and outs, I want to touch them with my slimy fingers. So way I can feel the, feel the cables going in and pull them out and make the loud noises and pops when I forget to turn the speakers off. <laughs> That's why we don't have nice things. I got nice things. I like the part with the- ish things. <laughs> yeah, they're not nice. All right, so um, anyone who has the movie, I guess we'll restartify it from the beginning. I. Hey. And then we'll just fast forwardify it as we go. How uh, fast do I play it? Ew. You go as fast as you want, baby. You show me what you like. Sorry. Um, subtitles. Um, I can you do that? You can change your play speed. Uh-huh. I'm not good with toys. I don't. I don't know. My PlayStation. I don't know if I can make it go faster. So I'm just gonna put it on normal speed. Whatever normal is these days. Yeah, I put it on faster. All right, so are we starting? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the whole rabbit, where we don't just shave two ladies' heads because they ask us. We're not even really sure. No, we cover their faces in magic silver cloth and endow them with the magical energies of Zane, the sword, the black priest, the Saturn, giving them the, I don't know. Hello, everybody. Uh, today we're talking about <laughs> Holy Mountain. I'm your host, Luke Madrid. I'm joined by our Jack Rabbits, Marisama, Seth, and our bunny, the Great Pyre. I don't really, not quite sure exactly what your real name is right at this moment, but we like to all hang out together. Yeah, this week we're talking about the esoteric, hidden symbolism and meaning of Alejandro Jordowski's the Holy Mountain. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. I got the impression that the intro sequence it, with all the, like, um, Islamic-style art, and I'll go into the patterning in the background. It looks like almost like a Qibla wall. He has uh, the two women, and they are all uh, have makeup and the, the hairstyle done, almost like out of The Shining, right? Like out of some old-timey... Yes, the maiden and the mother. And it's like European look. Oh, the maiden and the mother? Okay. I'm considered that. They also kind of look like uh, Marilyn Monroe. They do. <laughs> I was just going to make the connection. But then he sort of like strips them of that covering and makes them... Initiates. Nearly identical. See, I thought maybe this was the twins or the lovers, and, but I wasn't 100% sure because there's usually an angel that presides over the wedding of the lovers. And I thought maybe that was symbolic of uh, like the conscious and the subconscious or the physical soul and the, the angelic ab- soul or something. What about and, the star? Uh, uh, the star like associated with Aquarius with the, uh, the water bearer with the pitcher, like one pouring onto the land and one pouring back into the ocean. I mean, is that relevant in this situation? Um, to be honest i'm not really sure when does i'm not sure when does the star come in in the holy mountain i want i'm asking if this scene is if they are representative of the star perhaps because they and because they they end up naked right and the star is is naked because because the star has uh just gone through the tower and the tower like the right. strip strips them of their identity and their shared language and their their technology their and, it, and notice that he's in black right mm-hmm. and then the, the palace is in black and white right the cup is silver as in he represents the moon there yeah there's a lot of silver going well, on in the opening sequence all the water black and white seems in. to be a recurring theme in the movie though you know, with the the two pillars, the two pillars representing Yakin and Boaz in the magician's second introduction to the movie. That concept is as old as time itself. So maybe the two women are also of like the two pillars. Probably. Wasn't there? Wasn't it called Yin and Yang though? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yakin and in Boaz could be represented as Yin and Yang. Or Earth and Sky. And in the movie, it was signif. Yeah. 
well um, mother earth and father and sky and the ichin it's uh, associated with earth and heaven specifically well yeah um, and then there's uh, the fact that the magician or the priest turns white at some point and he's represented by the sun and the moon I believe so everything's mm. black and white you know what and they're all when they're covered in makeup and all that they're facing like zombies like away from the screen almost like looking over the audience and then when he takes the water from the silver he wipes it over their face and like cleanses them because as great pyre pointed out the first stage in alchemy is calcination which is of saturn he's dressed in black like saturn so right he's like the ego death he's taking their ego off of their face and they before they weren't looking at each other but he like puts them to look at each other right the moon principle of and, like empathy and love is not something that happens when you're looking at each other it's something that happens when you're looking in the same direction which they do by looking at the audience so this is alejandro jorowski's way of saying like this is an act of love for you but it's also you have to choose it yourself you have like i don't know something like that i do know that as a gemini that's my birth card because the lovers is associated with gemini so if you're a gemini the lovers is like is one of your cards right i'm a rising gemini Ooh, i'm a rising taurus Moo. Moo. Um, so, so what did you guys think about the the uh peacock symbolism man i love me some peacock with the eyeballs because apparently there's a legend that the eyes on the peacock's pattern are the eyes of a god or something or, or like it's they can they can see with them or some shit i don't know um the yazidi people which are a pre-monotheistic culture that resides in the kurdish regions of afghanistan worship uh an angel called melek Teus, who is personified as a giant peacock and nice. is the f- uh presides over the first day he's like the first day angel and in the yazidi theology it, it's pre-monotheistic but it has things that monotheism theism borrowed right so melek teus was told along with the other angels hey don't worship anything but me and all the angels like we got it we got it boss you got totally got it and then one day god goes out and he creates humans and he says all right angels y'all need to worship these humans and they all do it except for melek teus the king peacock he's like no 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 i remember what you said I'm not going to do it. And God's like, I just told you to do it. He's like, yeah, but you told me not to do it. And so they get in this argument, basically. And Melek Teus is like kind of like kicked out. He ends up on Earth and he ends up watching over and presiding over humanity in sort of this weird fight he has with God. So he introduces humanity to makeup, uh, armor, uh, weaponry and some other things that uh, agriculture that allows them to uh, live more dignified lives on earth. So that's the King Peacock. And and Christians and monotheists oftentimes relate this entity with Lucifer or Satan, Iblis. We can hear you, Pyre, don't worry. There's just some discord noise because we live in a digital era now. So Melek Teus is basically um, Lucifer, or but an older manifestation of the god of the sun or the solar god as well. And there might be an association with the winged serpent of Quetzalcoatl, I think. And so all cultures that worship the sun may also have a relationship to this angel. I don't know if that answers your question, Mari. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. So that's the that's the peacock symbolism. Also, I think the peacock guards the gates of heaven as well. And it's also because it's like, yeah. whoa, that's so distracting. Oh, my God. All the Maya, all this stuff, you know, that like circles around on the wheel because the peacock is, you know, dazzling and kind of scary, too, but also very beautiful and very, very horny. That's why the wings are out. It's like we're having some turbulence. There's no turbulence. It's fine. It's so oh. Fire has a storm going on, dropping in and out. It's okay. It's just a little bit of the old in and out. So, Luke, did you take note of the two cards at the beginning Hello? when they introduced? Luke, I'm gonna have you answer. That. Ask that, I'm gonna have you ask all that question again. Um, great Pyre, can you hear us? Uh, this is uh, Mother Base to Great Pyre. Can you hear us? I can hear you guys now. We have reestablished connection with oh, Agent Great that's... Pyre. You can now hear Mother Base, Great Pyre. Yep, loud and clear. A thunderstorm popped up out of nowhere. A thunderstorm popped up out of nowhere. Do you know that also uh, Set is the god of storms? So stop it, Set! Stop it! Please? I'll turn on first. I don't know what I did to make you <laughs> mad, Set. 
<laughs> that I, do, I know I need to do more work in our Minecraft realm. I know I'm really putting all the onus of all of the uh, construction on you. Uh, it's really not way. fair. Don't mind. It's, I mean, it's pretty relaxing, just building, you know. Is that why you built all this material yeah. realm? You're just chilling out one day and you're like, I'm just going to build this for funsies. And God's like, ha it's mine now. I rule over the whole thing. I have the passwords. And you're like, I could get the passwords. Pretty Fine. much exactly can what I happened. Ask, can I ask yeah. a question? Okay. Do I ask you about tarot cards now? Are we still talking about Holy Mount? Yes, because everything about Alejandro Jordowski is the tarot, because he lives, eats, shits, and breathes tarot, like I do. So yes, let's talk about the tarot now. Okay, so I'm, I'm paused at the beginning scene where they introduce the thief. Okay, where they introduce it, the thief who's like it, dead, right? It, or whatever, passed out. And it pans over to a frog and two tarot cards. And one of them says, like, crocodile. And the other one says, the fool. La mat was the name of the fool in the, the Marseille deck. I actually don't have the Marseille deck, um, although Alejandro Jordoeski believes it's the only proper tarot deck because it's anonymous. And he believes that the tarot should always be free and anonymous. So the crocodile in ancient Egypt, which we saw, we'll see the toppled ruins happen in a minute when he's walking past them with the children. And the children will have the crocodile on their back. The crocodile is always there with the fool. It's because the Horus who had to hide from his uncle Set along like the riverbanks with his mother Isis because everyone knew that Horus was going to grow up to become the king and unify Upper and Lower Egypt. And Uncle Set is like, well, I gotta kill him, you know? And so this story is recreated throughout the Bible, like with King Herod and the child Christ and so on and so forth. I believe he like hides on it. This is where now I can't remember the story properly where, <laughs> of course, he hides on a crocodile. I do know um, if you, if you want to know some magic, I, I know if you imagine both of your feet on two crocodiles giving the sign of silence, which is also the sign of Harpocrates, which is what this God became in the Greek culture, right? And then that sort of became Jesus Christ, you know, the suckling child God who is like uh -huh. bo born to rule the kingdom, right? The fool is the, is, the, is the person who's taking the journey through the tarot. So you are unto your own Christ or your own God, or you you are the child who will grow up to save your own kingdom. So this is the this is the journey the fool is taking, and I, he doesn't seem to start with all. He just seems to be dead or pissing on himself. I don't know. Yeah, he's like basically one with the earth at this point. He's not he's not an individuated person yet. I know the Great Pyre is like way more knowledgeable about alchemy and a lot, what we said earlier, the first stage is calcination, ego death. So if you're like covered in your own pee pee and poo poo, you've probably gone through some sort of ego death because it's, your ego is partially what helps you hold, is your part of your continence, you know? Yeah. And, and, and death is all about release, you know? So people crave release, the, the will towards death. So that's why the fool wants to jump. He just wants to let go. He's already let go. So that's why it also worked. What did you find out what the card was on the back of his uh, friend that helps him? Yeah, yeah, that was a symbol for apotheosis. So it's like and, a uh, hand with things over mm -hmm. the digits. From what I can tell, it looks like either saints or angels. Yeah, it, it's called the Hand of Mysteries. It's supposed to be a, uh, it's supposed to be the key to apotheosis itself. It has a key, a bell, a snake, a fish, a crown, a star, a moon, and a sun. A moon and yes, uh, all the elements. And the one in the movie, there's a hole in the hand, so it must be Jesus's hand. Well, the uh, the original uh, one has those symbols, but they've been replaced by angels. Well, in the movie. either saints or saints or angels, because there's four of them, and it's like somebody somebody on the thumb. I can't see it very well though. Uh, I'm sure each one is a representation of the four corners. Uh, you know, Uriel yeah. being fire and so forth and so on. Raphael being wind. I think the but, um, go ahead, go ahead. The I the symbol is too complex uh, for me right now to analyze. I really don't get it. So the All hand, right, I'm gonna do so the hand might be God's hand, you know, and you know, yeah. by saying uh, have being being the hand of God is like being God unto God. And he helps the man up. The saints also might be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because that's a very common thing with like the uh, that Catholic art style. Yes, and the that's, thumb could be baby Jesus. That's what I was thinking. That's what it looks like. Mm. 
So maybe it means to say like the ruins they're in have to do with our civilization coming from the ruins of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia and there's this innate uh, drive towards initiation and the fool's journey and we have a tendency to deify those individuals who are on that journey but also in our tradition to like kill them to drive to to kill them because there's this ancient drive to challenge the king right and this tribal notion of you know the ruler must be tested the ruler has to die for the you know we, we talk about this stuff in the show a lot i don't i don't but then he starts so is this is this the high priest that comes and like revives him and like puts him through all this and then he smokes a joint with him who is this person he well first he's uh, basically crucified or it's a metaphor for crucifixion by the little kids that run in and get in they had to go through all sorts of like christian symbolism and then how does he go like how does he get found by the priest well, I guess the priest just happens upon him. But this, what's interesting, his relationship with the priest, like they smoke the joint and it's like they forget about the little kids throwing the rocks. And then in the very next scene, all those kids are dead, like on this on this cart. And like him and that, that little stumpy person are like hugging and stuff. And it's like fascism is all over the modern world, right? And they're marching with right. the dead. And they're marching with the dead cats. So it's like this whole way of looking at yourself as a god, this deification of Christ or this deification of the Christ as something like we've mislooked at it and now it's manifesting itself as, you know, fascism and poverty and sensationalism and it's like one big Marilyn Manson music video, you know? Yeah, with, with a lot of public execution. There is another scene that uh, makes you think a lot, you know, the one where they're mass producing his image. That happens, um, that yeah. happens pretty much next, like right after the after, after that sequence. I mean, in the previous scene, like the shooting squads come out and murder people, and then the tourists get out of tourist buses and come take pictures. I thought that was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. It reminds me of how like, certain cultures are abused by tourism. Yeah, you take the plight of uh, a, a group of people and commercialize it, basically. Mass produce it, and, you, and it, it's, it, it co- commodify it. Yeah. You turn it into a product to be consumed by people who don't care about it or have any like interest in it. But at the same time, it does pull some people, but I don't know if that's... Well, the thief does earn a dollar there. Right after that scene, well, they commodify the culture of the people. They commodify the image of Christ. Mm-hmm. They use a thing to sell. They mass produce his image um, without any regard for the meaning behind it, just to sell it. So, and, and Christianity did take that same stuff from Egypt. They commodified and, uh, you know, reappropriated the symbols of ancient Egypt with Isis, you know, the mother god bearing the, the, the sun that'll bring the new day. And it's so, it's, 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 it's meme magic. Speaking of I mean, meme magic. Yeah. This Sorry. whole scene is about conquest. Are you at the scene with the, the conquest of the uh, lizards with all the... The lizard people and the frogs. <laughs> So here's here, so from my very limited uh, understanding, if you did something right, like whatever you did, you had to put your you you put your own little artistic spin on it, right? There was no mass produced anything in that culture. Like everything was like had its own little like everything was custom, right? There was nothing ma- there was no mass produced stuff. And like their toys had wheels, but they didn't use them like in, in for industrial purposes or in large scale. <sighs> It's very interesting to think about. And then the mm-hmm. scene is you see all the Roman soldiers gambling and stuff and all the mass produced items for sale. And, and the gold wasn't like money to them. They just saw it as a beautiful rock. And they were like, why are these quote unquote gods like obsessed with the gold? That was like the giveaway because the, the Spanish showed up and they're like, we're gods, you know, like, well, are they, you know, they played into that whole thing. And then eventually the natives were like, you know what? I think that these are just people that are hungry for gold. And that's what I was told. I don't know if that's true. I was told that in high school. Moving on. Yes. (laughs) Oh, boy. What's next? What is next? The next scene? Well, I think the scene where the the people are marching with the with fascism is really interesting Mm -hmm. because I I, I do have a question. If it's okay, Fainer, up real quick. Yeah. When the thief character takes the cross from the Romans, the, the, the big fat Romans, right? 
Uh, yeah. It seems to be a bard or a a guy in a purple outfit with a cape and like a fluffy feathered hat. And he has the cross. And then the nun, who seems to be one of these Roman dudes in disguise, takes takes him off. And then they the thief, he just hands it to the thief. And then the little guy helps him carry it. I think that's a tourist. And he has a camera. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's to say, like, they well, were they were crucifying a lot of people back then, maybe. And then the Romans invite the thief to party with them and get him really, really drunk. Hmm. And then they mass produce him, and it looks like the dope show music video. Yeah, while he's passed out, they make a cast of him, like Jesus, and use it to sell more stuffers. I think the dead cow is, like, the body of New Eat. Like, they're taking the old religion not to rehash what we've already said but so like oh so okay it gets really interesting though right after they smash con- the cast the ruins, yeah so after they smash the cast we're presented with the face of 12 it appears to be prostitutes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve prostitutes and one chimpanzee <laughs> don't forget the chimpanzee who's the old man with one eye the guy with one eye is another representation of Saturn because in the tarot, Aeon has an association with the devil or Capricorn and Capricorn wow. is ruled by Saturn and he's the, the, it looks like the prostitute that's being given the eye. The eye also has an association with the eye of the metis of the, you know, male member of sexual genitals and he's putting it in her hand so this is symbolic of these uh prostitutes have probably been put into this way of life since they were children they probably didn't have a choice and they're they give service to anyone they refuse no one and it's it, whether they can or they can't it's not and mary magdalene was a prostitute Whoa, shots fired, so shots there, fired. So there's one of them that follows the thief around. She, as soon as she sees him with the cross. She knows, like, r- intuitively. And, and it's the one that holds the monkey's hand. So what is what do we think the uh, um, chimpanzee represents? Uh, my best guess is um, he's a representation of humanity. His current uh, animalistic um, perspective. I think that makes sense. I think it might stand for evolution. That was my initial, if we're going to look at the stars as the, uh, basically the breasts or the tits of the gods, which these women, they're zoomed in on the breasts, probably because they're beautiful, but so are the stars. They, the, the ancient conception was, is that the milk of the stars is what fed the soul or the spirit. And that evolution is guided by this light that is uh, projected from the stars. And this light is beautiful and desirable. It has the, the qualities of sexual energy, perhaps. And that in so much well, as, the, like the stars are there for everyone you just have to go out and like look at them you just have to go get them you know it's kind of cold outside but you know they're hot or they're hot enough <laughs> right well the, the density of the movie it could easily be both of those things simultaneously so I it think, could be evolution yeah on humanity and the zodiac i mean i'm saying they're the zodiac human instincts and our history and also in Kabbalah, uh, the zodiac is the first sphere that emanates from Kether and is known as Hakma, mm-hmm. translates to wisdom. So the wisdom of the stars, the wisdom of the zodiac, um, and the milk that comes from them that feeds the human race or the soul and drives us towards growth or in this case evolution in the larger scale of things and maybe our relationship to the stars is what determines how old we are or how evolved we are as a race and here's here's our thief who just wants to walk away with a stupid copy of himself for what <laughs> for what what mission because he wants to redeem all those kids he let die or what I don't know but he should just go with her, obviously. But he's an idiot, so. <sighs> Say lovey. So what's this? He goes into the bed. Like I think, the church. What is? I think this isn't. I, it, this has got to be a criticism of the Roman Catholic Church. Am I? Am I yeah. fair to say that? Yeah, they're selling salvation basically, as if it's a commodity. What's with the and dancing? He- 
I feel like he was enraged that he was tricked into uh, being their model, basically, to facilitating it. And he was the one who whipped them when he woke up, and so it may have been him that led to some of this destruction. And, and then he, he killed he killed all of them but one, and then like dragged it around, and then ate it later. Oh my God! I so I, he I, consumed his he consumed his ego image basically, and that's when he meets the, he the white priest at, with the hat and stuff. So he he happens upon the Pope who seems to be directing all these military people with the masks, right? Oh and, right. And he's in bed with a copy. And there's an owl. So I, when I first saw that, I thought it was um, some. I thought it was a call to the Quillipoth and the twin powers of Thalmael, Moloch, and Satan, who are contending. Right. And I don't know. It's, with it's, the, the organized religion, basically. And I have the suspicion that the Roman Catholic Church is fully aware that they've reappropriated an ancient Egyptian symbol that has vast archetypal power and that they suppress the feminine and the native uh, because it allows them to have power over the world and spread their version of history, more or less. So that's my preachy, preaching to my own podcast stuff, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> But there was an interesting thing with the fascists. If you pay close attention, everyone who has a gas mask is dancing with someone who doesn't. Yep. I didn't, I couldn't really conceptualize what that meant, but I think it's the, um, you know, how civilians uh, become soldiers, you know, and Christianity's connection to war. That's undeniable. Organizing but the masses. Sure. Yes. Something of the sort. You know, Christianity is um, kind of fascist when you, when you think about it. You know, you're you're going to your authoritarian big daddy in the sky for for power. You know, so the combination of fascism and, and Christianity, especially the Roman Catholic Church, is it's pretty apt. I, I think. Alejandro Jodorowsky would not disagree with you. That's for darn sure. Alejandro Jodorowsky has kind of a low opinion of religion, and he feels that religion is has got its gloss, you know, into the people. And if you listen to him talk long enough, he gives a very lucid description of the five fingers and what, well, like, like in mudras, like what? Man, I said that funny. How you can, what each finger represents and what their energy means, and you can use his description of the fingers to decode some of the symbolism in the tarot that is usually associated with the Pope or the high priest, and I'll explain how. Alejandro Jodorowsky, the director of the Holy Mountain, he was studying Tantra and the five fingers, and this is what he discovered. The pointer finger is the intellect. The middle finger is the heart. The ring is the sex. The pinky is the body, and the thumb is the soul. So when the high priest is holding out, giving his benediction with the two, his two, uh, his ring finger and his pointer finger, he's using his intellect and his heart. But what he holds back for himself are the three, the sex, the body, and the soul. So the, 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 yeah, so the high priest hides these things from the people. He, and this is a symbol that you see repeated many, 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 many times. And um, the high priest, regardless of which tarot deck, usually if it's Kabbalistic in nature, it'll stick to this motif. Oh, okay. So moving on to the next scene. Also, can, uh, one more thing. Alejandro Jodorowsky says that the, his intellect, it seeks, it seeks to know more. The heart seeks to connect more, to be more in the world. And the creative urge, the sex, wants to create more, which is an act of giving. So that's, a, okay, moving on. I thought that was kind of cool. It's the hmm. next scene, next scene, next scene. Woo! Look at that, Mari. Yeah! Where, where are you guys at? Ow! Uh, he just went up. He just went up the red tower up. on the hook. Now, I, I would okay. like to talk about that sequence because it's definitely th the most, maybe the most iconic. And then it's quickly followed up by a, a part of the episode that you and me can argue about, and it's gonna be really fun. Oh yes. Oh good. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, 
So like he's in the he's in the modern world, which is in the ruins of the old world, and it's all it's all crappy. And they're like he sees some gold somewhere. I'm not really paying attention. He, out of a Target bag, right? I don't know why there's gold in the Target bag, but he goes up the hook, and he's got a dagger with him. So he's only using his mind, right? According to Jodorowsky, he's purely using his mind, and so he's going up this big tower which stands above the people. And then he goes up and up, and I have to fast forward it because this, you know, people are trying to listen to a podcast. And his... Plunks into a tube or a whole a channel. Yes, and the Magdalene is looking at him like, where is he going, you know? Punctures a curtain, so to speak, like almost like penetrating. If he had any brains, actual, any intellect, he would have been like, hey, you want to go up with me? You can go up first. And he just stares at her butt the whole way up. It would have gone a lot faster. <laughs> anyway, so oh, he yeah. he's such, such a fool. So, And then he takes the dagger and he stabs through the veil. Right, and goes into the temple of the sun. So in Kabbalah, the sun resides in Tifereth, and Tifereth sits at the top of the mountain holy mountain and the sun is a white is the sun is can be conceptualized as light of the spirit and much in the same way the dark side of the moon the white light of the spirit is is the white word refracted through a crystal and it creates the rainbow spectrum which he is now crossing so i believe the veil that he crossed kabbalistically speaking is the veil of paraketh and so he's moving beyond the world of the elements the elemental kingdom and he's moving now into actually the holy mountain where he's going to meet his uh, guardian angel this would be his holy guardian angel or his higher self or the face that he has he, the face that he views as most appropriate for God, the persona that he places I would upon argue God. That it's the sun. This is the sun. That's the same thing. In, and he in, sat in throne in an area that looked like a sunrise. Yes, this because. is this is the same thing though in this in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. We're describing the exact same thing though. Okay, and then these are where the pillars that Fire was talking about is that say like it's the I Ching for yin and yang, black and mm-hmm. white, and then also I this uh character mercury is introduced i think it's mercury i i i'm gonna disagree with you but i think you are justified in arguing that because what why did you say that i have some freeze frames for you if you can get in close on her sure that's gonna be um, very hard for me because she's very hard to look upon because she's so beautiful well after after they (laughs) after they fight and when she's introduced the screen flashes over like what she has on she has just some like silver jewelry on okay but if you look at her earrings it's uh the symbol for mercury in you know astrology and alchemy and everything well she has some other symbols on her too and the uh, back is uh, the uh what is that the snake on the stick with the wings that um doctors use that's another symbol of mercury that's like Caduceus. Staff. yeah Caduceus staff now the the reason i would disagree with you is because she has lots of alchemical symbols on her as well the staff could represents the sun and also mercury she has She's uh, a servant of the sun. she has a pentacle on her hand which could be associated with gavura she has aleph on her forehead which could be associated with air and she has uh, some alchemical stuff around her throat chakra she has um i sort of thought she was the high priestess and she my, could be my, she's a messenger of the gods that's what mercury is now but mercury is also a thief and I sort of thought that because he becomes the master's apprentice, that he was Mercury, the thief we're watching, the trickster. Well, he um, becomes Earth. Uh, he does become um, Earth, but that's also uh, the path of the tarot. The fool, fire. the fool eventually becomes Saturn or Earth in the tarot. Um, I, that's a quick little tidbit to add in. Um, in the alchemical processes, Mercury is represented by a peacock. Um, that's it's called Catapavonis, and it rep- it is usually represented as a rainbow. It's interesting that this character is introduced right after a rainbow scene. So nice. I'm up in between you two guys. I think she could either be the high priestess, the moon, or Mercury. But um, I just throwing that in now. 
you know that uh, the rainbow representation could be connected to her as opposed to the sun because the sun sits on um, black and white pillars of um, um, yin and yang right well, the the dark hatted priest is the same person but it's like the moon it's a component of the sun which is the ego or the self in my opinion it would be ill suited for Alejandro Jodorowsky to um, r- leave out the moon because all the other planets are accounted for none left out except the moon in this instance whereas in the other way if we apply the thief to mercury it l- has all the planets there so that's the my that's my big argument all right and also Quick, Al- alejandro Quicksilver. i did listen to what alejandro dordowski you're right quicksilver absolutely you're right about that so because silver because mercury is seen as the the fluidic transmission between the high and the low so she does she is of that quality as well so i agree with you there i don't know audience what do you think does the super gorgeous woman that alejandro jordowski is joined by on his at his right hand is she mercury or is she the moon because anyway so moving on he goes through a purification process now i will say alejandro jordowski did say that he plays two people in this movie he plays both the thief and he plays the alchemist and he said that those two characters represented the lower self and the higher self. Mm-hmm. Also, you said the fool, the association with the fool and earth uh, in the, at least that this might've been a mimetic game of telephone problems. But if you look at like the old uh, statues of Moses, how he's got horns, he's got like devil horns on him. And how, if you look at the fool, how the fool also has horns and how all F means ox in Hebrew and the ox tills the earth. So there's this long association with horns and the fool and all F the ox. So those, all those things sort of go together. And also because the fool, when he completes the journey ends up as the universe, he goes from zero all the way to 21 and becomes Saturn. And he's got the four cherubic beasts around him now. And he's completed the journey to step through and begin another journey on the other side as another fool, you know? So Hmm. there is a reason why he would become the earth and why the fool is associated with earth. It's part of the, it's part of the hermetic system of tarot, whether or not, some of it was derived from mimetic accidents because that's just how it is like Kabbalah stuff it evolves over time and um, can I just because it was getting distracting how often like I would see this character on screen because whenever I'd see her, I just, my mind would turn off because she was so beautiful. And I had, a, yeah. right. I couldn't stop. Every time she came on the screen, I was like, Whoa. And I'd say something annoying, like dad style, you know, dads do that. And I noticed that over, she has a yod right above her pubic hair on her mound, but right above that, yeah. she, ha- she has a teth and the teth means serpent. And it's associated in the tarot with the 11th card strength or in Crowley system lust. But in the Marseille deck, it is, oh boy. Where is it? Crying out loud. No, it's a really cool word. Is it Farenza or is it, it means force. Anyway, the word means force. Alejandro Jordowski was saying that the sex is the force of life. That's where he says the quote, real life is. In the Tholemic system, a new wheat and all those of new wheat, which is, of course, symbolized by the ox and the stars and the starry night, is 11. And it's the symbol of union. And if the sex is the real life, then union is the force the force itself and the the sex force he also says that when we're alone we have nothing but when we're together we have everything and so he he and he, he at least personally in his own schema of way of thinking he believes that like the one and alone is death and leads to poverty and aloneness but that it's through union that we gain any sort of life and so i thought that was interesting i thought that was very philemic of him and also that that it's called the force also (laughs) and then and then people have also told me that we only really have star wars because of jordowski's work on dune like he was the one that paved the way for all that yeah 
So, and he's so he's kind of in that world of things. Yeah, we threw some more tarot cards after the uh, thief is initiated. He goes through an alchemical process, right? Do you have anything to say about that, Great Pyre? Is there anything that stood out to you? Because there's like a because he goes um, he is in the pool and there's a hippo and there's a peacock, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hippo is a fertility uh, symbol. What uh what struck me as interesting is um the structure. That's actually a a cru uh, alchemical crucible. You could see it in a lot of old Renaissance art, yeah. and then the transformation of the sh the shit into gold. Um, one of the processes in between was crystalline in nature. That reminds me of how when Buddhists die, sometimes they have the, the diamonds found in their bodies. The relics. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, like the relics episode, yeah. Um, some, some physical uh, substrates are usually associated with in, uh, enlightening, enlightenment this itself. Like the flower, certain crystals, like diamonds and stuff like that. Um, certain structures are given that uh, level of praise, basically. Most notably, the lotus. But um, gold in alchemy is that same thing. Gold represents enlightenment or the perfect god form of a being. So, Purification of a soul. Yes. You know, also to tie it back to Tantra and sex, because that's what I like to do. And so does Alejandro <laughs> Chodorowsky. He said when he was studying, he he doesn't know, he, does, he says English is really not his language. And I've been listening to him in English because I speak English. He's, he's saying that when he was studying the Tantra, he saw the mandala. And in the mandala, there's the the center or the kernel like what you're talking about the the jewel of the lotus omana pod me home the jewel of the lotus and he says that the jewel of the lotus are usually in the center of the mandala is a couple uh fornicating he says porno making the sex <laughs> making the sex i just get horny listening to this guy man um I, yeah i feel like he knows what he's talking about for some reason and then he he's like so all of the Maya is all circling around that one thing at like the the, Gener the generation point. Right. And that the. the yes. And the the uh, I assume he's talking about these Tibetan sorcerers th who we've talked about quite a bit. They do these mandalas with the sand, you know, and the second they're done with them, they just like psh, destroy it. You know that, right? You've seen that, right? The sand mandalas mm -hmm. that the Tibetans do, they, they're super intricate. They're, they're like super intricate and they take forever to work on and they're like perfect. And the second they're done with them, they just destroy it like it's nothing. And Alejandro yeah. Jorowski, I think, learned a lot from that. He says that, yeah, he's like, real art is meant to be destroyed. It's like, it's not meant to be like consumed. And so he has like a very anti-consumerist outlook. He believes yeah, that, you can see that he believes it's wrong to charge for tarot, but I'm going to charge you for it. So, yeah, head on over to Patreon. Anyway, continuing. You were saying the, uh, it, there's the, it's an alchemical uh, tool that's used to, what's it called, a crucible? Yeah, alchemical crucible. It's used to um, follow the seven steps of alchemy, you know, calcination, dissolution, separation, and conjunction. But the interesting thing about that is, people don't know this, there are two um, philosopher stones. It's the lesser stone, and then there's the philosopher stone. Oh, that's the cool. Lesser stone, the lesser stone is achieved through um, the fourth step. You can stop at the fourth step, and you could basically stay like that for the rest of your life, but you won't achieve the full God form. The um, fourth step is conjunction, union with the anima and animus, or... or if you're a woman, it'd be the inverse. This union of the female and the, and the male creates the hemorphodite um, power of um, Baphomet, basically. But or to go beyond androgynous, that, like the power yeah, of one. What if you are like yeah. a cuddly orange puppy dog? Then do you, what is your <laughs> counterpart? Just curious. Is it a cat or like... I'm just, I'm just no fucking idea. with you. I'm just fucking with you because you're doing such a good fucking job. All right. Um, <laughs> so like, uh, no, so the lesser stone is accomplished after the first uh, four phases, right? The black, the white, the yellow, and the red, which are disintegration, purification, revitalization, and perfection in that order, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But to go, to go beyond that, you have to enter uh, uh, Mercury. Mercury is inspiration. So you must 
basically interact with an archetype or a force that is beyond your consciousness. And then after that, you do a, a last spiritual purification and you can you basically create a trinity with your two united selves, your male and your female half, and a higher spiritual archetype. This creates the true Philosopher's Stone, and the, the sought after gold of alchemy. Literally and, and metaphor. So in the hermetic Kabbalistic system, then those three would be the king and the queen, mm-hmm. which and then the 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 angel or the higher power comes from the union of those two. Yes. <clears throat> In which we see symbolized in the film both in the beginning with the with the women yeah it's yeah. I, lo- I lost my thread of thought but yeah <laughs> um you know it, it it goes back to concepts that is really tread over and, and it tries to remind you in very subtle uh subtle ways but Half of it is subtle, and the rest of it's pretty in-your-face symbolism. You said it best yesterday when you were like, it's like a dream. When I'm in it, I know exactly what it means, but when I come out, it's like kind of hard to explain. And that's, yeah, that's exactly how I feel when I'm watching The Holy Mountain. Like, I, I get it when I'm watching it, but then if I had to say it on a podcast or something, like, it's going to take some piles of notes and, like, a bunch of, like, friends that are way smarter than me to explain some of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sexuality is, yep. is the life. It's the real life. The goddess is there. Oh. He says. He says the goddess is there. So that's Isis. He's so he knows the goddess is the. He knows the the star goddess is the one to be worshipped. He's a he's an undercover thelemite. I know it. <laughs> it was probably his people that uh, taught Crowley. Watch. What what's the next scene? Is the next scene the part that confused the shit out of me? The planets. Oh, the next scene is or, where you bust out five dollars and join www.patreon.com slash the whole rabbit for five bucks. You can hear the rest of the episode, which I'm going to cut at some point. So, um, yeah, eat carrots to shoot lasers. And we're going to talk about planets now and move on to the rest of the film because we did have. See, this is fair because we had a free episode about planets so we can talk about the gosh dang old planets. I know that they bust out the tarot cards before they go into the planets, and then the guardian angel is standing on the cards in the center of the circle, and then his apprentice now, which is Mercury, <coughs> Mari, <coughs> um, Thank you. is now circling him, uh, looking at the different archetypes, and he's given, what, the four elemental weapons, because as we've said, he's already gained the lesser stone now and i become a magician and fallen off the cliff already which he actually had to go up a tower to do first which is kind of cool yeah and then i i give different like he says the wand is to know he puts the wand between his legs and he's like do no yeah i always make that to will um but okay but to to know is like to old bible terms to know is like to have sex with and like you know you do that with your genitals and so that makes sense and then to, to dare he has the sword like to ask the question you have to have some balls I guess I don't know yeah his wording of it was um, kind of janky in hindsight and then the cup is to to want I think it is and then the the pentacles to be silent I do it a little different. I do to know, to dare, to will, to be silent, and mm-hmm. I think to will. I don't. I don't know. Will. Will to me is the wands. To know is the sword. To dare is the cup because you have to put your heart on the line to do anything. And then uh, to be silent is, of course, the body because it hides all the secrets in it. Hmm. But that's just what I think. I mean. It, it's and that you can kind of mix and match it's like avatar because the sword is the fire weapon in avatar but in some tarot decks it's usually the air so don't let your holy mountain avatar you know elemental differences fuck you up just go with it i'm sorry i'm blabbering now we're trying to get to the planets exactly because i yeah. but i think it's, it's important that they they address they get into the tarot he's like he says the tarot will teach you how to create a soul and then the peacock is there chilling with them on the moving floor looking fly as hell all right so we get to the first planet why do we get to the first planet is venus probably because we've already done mercury (coughs) sorry mari um it hangs out with the sun yeah (laughs) venus is really close to the sun in the sky usually always yes 
that's why it's either a morning star or an evening star right so and it's the planet you, that's up when you're trying to get your huh? on you wanted to make the connection for um, the genders were swapped between venus and, and mars right in, in a way like the first one they go into is um venus who is the he's the president of a company that manufactures cosmetic and aesthetic project products uh, so beauty like beds pillows cosmetics yeah Out, outer beauty and he has like what 50 wives or something but they're all his workers they're all his factory workers that work right. in his father's factory and Ven- i believe venus's father is saturn or chronos and it was uh, i was born of sea foam which I assume is semen, I suppose, and growing through time. And so Venus is... Venus is also the hottest planet, by the way. Can we mention that? It's also the brightest planet. It's also the best Your planet. Favorite. It's also the best planet. I also forgot to mention that. It's the original planet of war. Um, yeah. Um, that initial connection to war comes from Ishtar. She was a love and war goddess simultaneously. And then they keep watering her down until she gets turned into Africa. This motherfucker knows what's up. Great Pyre knows what's up. And then yeah. it, uh, Lilith is based on Ishtar, I believe. I wonder about that. Lilith is a very in- interesting crazy. character. Is she. Oh yeah. And then and then the the woman he takes, she puts all these like white seeds in her mouth, which I think. Do we even need to explain that? No, we don't need to explain that. It's pretty obvious. I think maybe <laughs> there's the maybe Venus. Because Venus is not a fertility goddess. That's the moon, right? And so maybe Venus would be more inclined to pull out because it looks cool. Yeah, because she's beautiful. She's about beauty and aesthetics. It, it doesn't matter if it's fake. And it can all be on the outside. Like, it, it, the beauty is on the outside. Right. Like, how they dress up the corpses with, like, automaton wiring so that it looks like they're still alive in the coffins. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. That was so creepy. <laughs> but I mean, what if what's this whole we're going into a future where you could like have your loved one, you know, it's like that Black Mirror episode. I don't like to say a bunch of brand names in the episode, but you, where you can have your your loved one like in an app and it just takes all its all the information it knows about your loved one and makes a convincing yeah. AI simulation. That would totally be some Venus stuff. Oh yeah. I would describe the shit out of me, but I guess. I think it'd be cool for science. I don't know about for anything else. Mm. I don't know. I like I, know. I, I like Venus. I like all this fake stuff. I'm all about it. Like beauty is uh, important. It's just, so, but it is good to mention that. Like I think we see all the planets in Holy Mountain when we first see them. We sort of see them in their lowest, most elemental, most degraded form because all their symbols are like upside down, right? I believe so. Uh, yeah, they are actually. I think everybody's kind of inverted, like they're manifesting the negative qualities of the planets. Right. That's why Venus was just beauty and. Um, Mars was just mass producing weapons. In its positive form, Mars is supposed to be the impetus for action. But um, or drive. But then that it was just um, war, 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 which is that's the lowest aspect of uh, Mars. Lowest aspect of Mars, in my personal opinion. It's like a hollow physical threat rather than actually being strong. And in uh, Chaos Magic, uh, in Lieber MMM, I hope I didn't get that wrong, uh, uh, Peter Carroll describes all the different colors of magic, and they're more or less based on the Kabbalah, but red magic is war magic in his system, and he describes it as separate from black magic, whereas black magic is uh, the magic of just death, like killing someone quick and quiet, it's over. Uh, Red is actually made to intimidate and make the enemy afraid and make them lose their will to fight you. I think um, they call Mars the the lesser um, malefact in, in in certain circles. Oh, I, yeah, I think you're right, man. As usual. Yeah. And Saturn is supposed to be the greater ma- uh, malefact, which is death. That would be the black and red um, for Saturn and, and Mars, respectively. I cannot remember what the black swan means. It does, doesn't that have to do with Jupiter or Juno or Juno? And- Oh no, there's somebody somebody falls in love with a swan and some Venus stuff. So there's some secret hidden Venus stuff going on in the 
in the Mars. So yeah, because all this is about her all her secretaries are men, and they're all in like this pit, and they all just, like sleep naked in this pit. Did we already yeah. say that? Oh, are I'm, you talking yeah. about Mars? I'm sorry, I zone out sometimes when somebody that beautiful is on screen. I can't. My brain literally she, goes somewhere else. Like she okay, was so putting on like her panties. The- I just can't think when it happens. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She has two female companions in bed, of course, and her dogs, which is I thought was interesting. I want that woman and so bad. And all then all the men, all the men live in a pit and naked outside, which is kind of funny. With the animals. Hmm. And the Mars symbol is turned, pointing down as the female symbol would be. And Venus is pointed upwards, like the sword would be. Like the male symbol would be correct. So they seem to be somehow connected in the. Co- and the and, yeah, and the male slaves are like fenboy hooters here. Like they got their little pink furs and bell bottoms on. They're so adorbs. Um, if you watch Holy Mountain, just watch it for the rock and roll weapons and the, the mystical weapons for Buddhists. Just, just this whole scene is worth the whole movie to me. Like, oh my god. <laughs> I know. Oh, what, what was the next one? In? That's all I want in life is to play with these weapons. <laughs> Sneaker gun. Ah, so, yeah, Mars really turns me on after watching these. And then the next one is Jupiter. Oh, yeah. He's the planet of expansion, fortune. Mercy. Whereas, whereas Mars is... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, because it's inverted, he, he actually represents excess or to be bloated with too many things. Stagnant and sick. You know how the wife like scrubs everything with, uh, you know, mm-hmm. alcohol, with an alcohol swab. She doesn't even look at him. The king is sick motif where the king is just doing too many drugs and it's like the kingdom is suffering because of the excess. And so in the Kabbalistic system, that's why you would need some of Mars's. uh sternness and eliminative qualities in order to be a more balanced and the balance is achieved in the sun uh, this is the balancing force between the mercy and the power you know vagavura vagedula for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever so that's why the sun is is the boss but you know we all love jupiter because jupiter just wants to part had a he knows how to party. He just wants to party. Yeah, like, he, he and he's party. merciful. He's not going to... He's the Jupiter never attacks you unless he's got the permission of all the other gods. And so you've really fucked up if Jupiter fucking whacks you. And Jupiter's also the king. There's no really above Jupiter either. There's no one to really stop him to tell him he can't do it. You know what I mean? And that's partially part of the problem. And, and that's maybe why war comes to him is everyone's like, look at all the shit this guy has and doesn't need. We're going to take some of it. And so then Jupiter necessarily has to become more like Mars and pull out his rock and roll weapons and you know (laughs) eventually the sun comes about from all this but i just want to be in this taxi cab with because he that's not his wife that's his lover and he pays her what 100 and then they do drugs together and like he's really happy with her you know like they just he's like he's like an andy warhol too he just like manufactures art god love him dude god bless him no have him bless me that's what i need Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's in this taxi definitely- cab. Mm. Yeah, I definitely need it, right? No, have him bless everyone. We should all be Philemic kings. All of us. That's the whole point of Philema, is we're all supposed to be kings and queens. So even though it means above probably- the abyss. So then but Jupiter's also like an art collector. He creates art. Right. Now do I have anything to say about that? Well, there is so his sphere is number four in Kabbalah and his lover has hairy armpits. Oh my God. Shut up, Luke. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. So, so number four, Oh, these seventies chicks with the hair, dude. Oh, I love seventies movies. Oh, I'm straight, but even the dude in his outfit don't look half bad. Like, so 
Um, the four, the four is is sometimes that sphere is associated with the demiurge because, um, and also the tetrahedron. These things have to do with each other because to achieve dimensionality or, or some manifest existence, you necessarily have to get to four because before four, you only have first a point and then a line and then a plane. But it's by you know putting together four planes, or actually, what is it? Yeah, four planes, you get a tetrahedron, not a pyramid, a tetrahedron. And it's a, and it has a, f- uh, a fourness to it because there's a triangular plane below and it's joined up top by another point. And so it's the one, it's the one with the trinity above it or below it, however you want to look at it. And it's necessarily a creative and a destructive force. Uh, so Jupiter does possess like the power to create and also the, you know, mostly to create. I think he leaves Gavura to destroy. That's partially how this, I don't know how the system works, but it's from his, his force that, uh, whatever, let's continue. I definitely like when he humps the machine with the, that's my life, by the way. <laughs> that is my whole life. Is sex robot? Yes, absolutely. Dude, and of course the guy, the other guy can't do it. He's he's being too rough with it. And on that note, if you'd like to hear the rest of the show where we talk about the rest of the planets, grab five bucks and head on over to www.patreon.com/slash/the-whole-rabbit and become a 